It looks like September is going to be fantastic for gamers of all sorts. I'm Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 new games of September 2017. Number 10 is Total War Warhammer 2. Last year, the fastest selling Total War game of all time came out, Total War Warhammer, which was also the first Total War game not to feature a historical setting, but honestly, I could not think of a better universe to do so than the Warhammer. It built on some of the best features in Total War Attila, but the whole extra advantage of agents and all of that, and it's actually quite interesting because Warhammer 1 was meant to be the first in a trilogy, this being the second part. Considering the RTS drought we've lived in now for quite a long time, and the new ideas, the interesting stuff brought in Total War Warhammer, and over the previous game's life cycle, it became significantly more optimized. Being it's still using the same Total War engine as previous games, it's good that they continued developing it, and I'm interested to see where they take it for this one. The game will be out on the PC the 28th. Number 9 is Pro Evolution Soccer 2018, a game that the developers want you to know is not a simple to pick up game, but rather one you're going to have to master. Now whether or not this is marketing, I don't know, but Pro Evolution Soccer has always basically been the main other choice besides FIFA. That's not to say it's better than FIFA or worse than FIFA, they're two somewhat different games that have their own interesting little quirks and both are great games in all honesty. If you like soccer slash football. Honestly, Pro Evo is always a good series. It's probably one of the few things Konami continually does right, and I don't really know how, because they're like the kings at screwing things up, but frankly, I enjoyed 2017, so I'm looking forward to this one. Pro Evo Soccer 2018 will be out the 12th for a wide range of consoles, including the previous generation, as well as Microsoft Windows. Number 8 is Pokken Tournament Deluxe which is a Pokemon fighting game, and yes, that is pretty much all you need to know. I mean, there's a couple of gameplay quirks, battles are broken down into phases depending on exactly where you are in the field, and exactly what control scheme it takes. Obviously, the more traditional dual phase is when it feels most like a fighting game. It came out last year on the Wii U, and it's a pretty darn good game. The Switch is, of course, an enhanced port of it, with a couple of exclusive Pokemon that have not appeared in any other version of the game. Now, Pokémon Tournament is a really enjoyable game, to the point where it actually outsold Street Fighter V last year, worldwide, despite Street Fighter V being multi-platform and Pokémon Tournament being on the Wii U, which, you know, nobody has. Now, that being said, the final numbers are probably different, but at one point it had overtaken, which is kinda crazy. Pokémon Tournament comes to the Nintendo Switch on September 22nd. Number 7 is Knack 2, which is kind of, hopefully, when they get the knack of knack because knack is a pretty cool idea that didn't quite live up to what it needed to be first time around however the developers believe in this idea so much they well they kind of made a game not knowing if anybody would care if they made it and let's just be completely clear this version of knack looks great there's platforming combat stealth and a lot of puzzles from the looks of it and everything we've seen indicates this is going to be a big improvement over the first game, which is a definite necessity for this to be a good game, as opposed to a decent game, which the first one was, but obviously we all really want great games, of course. Nat comes to PS4 on the 5th. Number 6 is Divinity Original Sin 2, a game we've been waiting for quite a while, frankly three years from the last Divinity Original Sin, and, well let's just go ahead and say this, I think it's probably going to be worth the wait. First off, it's entirely voiced. I'll be honest, that wasn't something I was expecting. There's little going to be 1200 characters and they're going to be fully voiced. I'm personally looking forward to the skill crafting system. I think that that's something that's really going to add to the Divinity gameplay. And if I'm honest, I'm just going to say I think this game is going to kick ass. It's been a long time coming and the previous game is awesome. Divinity Original Sin 2 is coming finally on the 14th to Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Number 5 is Cuphead and again, this is a game that we've been waiting for quite a while and it's one of those ones that's probably going to be worth it because Cuphead is probably the most unique looking and 
yet most reverent to animation of any platformer I've seen in my entire life. It's intended to look like a 1930s Disney cartoon, although they can't say Disney, so they don't really market it saying, hey, it looks like an old Disney cartoon, but it really does. Cuphead's a run-and-gun platformer, and in all actuality, this looks like one of the most lovingly crafted titles in a long time. And if this doesn't turn out to be one of the best quote-unquote retro games of the year, and I hate using that term because frankly it is now outdated on the count quote-unquote retro games have gone far beyond that of what is retro. Cuphead is gorgeous and the result of a lot of time and love. I can't wait to play it. And you know I will be on the 29th on Xbox One and Windows. Number four is FIFA 18, the football simulation game personified. This is the premier series, as you know, regarding soccer slash football. And let's just go ahead and say it, FIFA has held a crown for a very long time that is well deserved and although I do love me some Pro Evo, FIFA is typically my buy first and Pro Evo's typically my couple months down the road football slash soccer game. As per usual, it looks like FIFA is going to be the benchmark for graphics in the genre. It's built on Frostbite and Frostbite is a friggin awesome engine and although I'll be entirely honest, I'm not that interested in the story journey thing, which honestly, if you're a Nintendo Switch player, you don't really have access to anyhow. There's no reason to expect this will not be the biggest soccer game of the year, the one that everybody is playing, and if you like multiplayer soccer matches, this is probably going to be where you play them. It hits this console generation and the previous one as well as PC on the 29th. Number 3 is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which has simplified the game just a little bit, making it a 2 on 2 as opposed to 3 on 3, but I'm interested in the Street Fighter X Tekken stuff that they've incorporated as well as some of the other things. Frankly, Marvel vs. Capcom Capcom is one of the premier fighting franchises. It brings in all of the best stuff from a lot of different elements of a lot of different games. And how can you not love the Marvel characters versus the Capcom characters? That's seriously just a really enjoyable thing to play, even if sometimes they look really goofy. I'm talking about Chun-Li. That's okay, though. I'm not really here for specifically just seeing what Chun-Li looks like. I actually just really like the games. MVC Infinite is hitting on the 29th on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Number two is a 3DS game. Oh yes, oh yes, Metroid Samus Returns. Let's just go ahead and say this. Metroid 2 The Return of Samus never really lived up to the original Metroid because of the platform it was on and its certain limitations that we all know. The Game Boy was not a powerful system by any means and was significantly less powerful than the NES even. This doesn't just remake it but reimagines it which makes me very happy on account I like reimaginings of old games quite a bit. It sets the bar high and makes sure that they have to give you more than the same old, same old experience and includes some new features such as the ability to fire at any angle, just having a free reign of where you're aiming, as well as a pretty cool melee counterattack that we've seen quite a few times at this point and just want to do. Oh yeah, I am so ready for Metroid Samus Returns. See, I liked Metroid so much when it was a 2D franchise. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy Metroid Prime quite a bit. I am not criticizing it at all. I just would like it if there was a lot more 2D Metroid games as well. Hopefully this is the start of seeing new ones just coming out on some sort of basis. That would be amazing. Metroid Samus Returns, which is very much a return, is coming to 3DS on the 15th. And finally, number one, Destiny 2, the second in the series of the possibly both over and under underrated shooters from Bungie. I say that because it launched really garbage. And I think we all know the Destiny story at this point, although it got eclipsed by No Man's Sky and then other games since then. Still, it kind of set the bar for huge disappointment and then it sort of rebuilt itself, which is both good and bad on account. I don't like praising a company for releasing an unfinished project and then over the course of several years finishing it while people are playing it. But on the other hand, the final product ended up being quite good. I'm hoping that since the end of the Destiny cycle was good, that the beginning of the Destiny 2 cycle is just good from the get-go and they spend the whole time making it better. We'll see. But I think there's quite a bit of encouraging news and we've seen a lot of good stuff regarding the game, so I'm thinking probably going to be worth it. It releases on PS4 and Xbox One this month on the 6th and then next month on the PC. We'll probably talk more about that next month, though. 
And a quick bonus for you, Dishonored Death of the Outsider, the DLC for Dishonored 2, which is frankly just a hugely, hugely underrated game. We get to play as friggin' Billy Lurk. If you like Dishonored, you know why I care about that. That's awesome. NHL 18, another promising entry to the NHL series with what looks to be incredibly good puck physics, if you've seen a few videos, and Danganronpa v3 Killing Harmony, the absolutely bizarre overdrive murder mystery solving simulator, for lack of a better term, is a truly unique experience and I look forward to the newest. Which of these games are you looking forward to the most? Tell us in the comments, and if you like this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.